Hey everybody, welcome back once again to Motherboards.org. I'm L. Rick Ferris. Today we're continuing with our line of series with our co-host JJ from ASUS. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of their latest wireless routers. That's right. This features the new wireless AC technology and JJ's going to tell you about all the new features that are coming in this little nice box. So let's go JJ, let's talk about this new product. Well, first and foremost, you already kind of covered it, is, is that this is an entirely brand new wireless standard. Um, you know, when we talk about new standards in wireless technology, this is not something that really occurs that often. Uh, wireless N has actually been around for really quite some time Years. now. Um, yeah, and it's gone through different kind of revisions. It went through kind of different spatial streams. So going from maybe like one stream to two stream, three stream, what's called MIMO, which is multiple input, multiple output, like more advanced antenna technologies. But AC is actually an entirely new specification that works on a designated band. Now, uh, for uses that are a little bit familiar with 802.11n, it works on 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. AC exclusively works on the 5 gigahertz band, and it's really focused at kind of the next generation of high performance wireless connectivity. So where you were taking a look at N being really high performance, giving you a really robust experience with current generation wireless N routers, this kind of takes it further to really focusing on what users are starting to do right now, but also kind of their needs for the future. We're in a generation now where a lot of users are streaming high bitrate content, whether that's gonna be high fidelity music, whether it's gonna be high bitrate videos, they're doing wireless syncing to different types of uh, devices, whether it's like tablets or smartphones. It's pretty much becoming a wireless world. Yeah. I mean, everything's going wireless. I mean, I could pretty much see everything in the future in your entire house being wireless with the way things are going. Most definitively. And so you're gonna need a backbone and an infrastructure to be able to enable that. And that's where AC in the current draft specification is being kind of ramped up to be able to enable that. So on paper, we're looking at a wireless specification that is equaling and exceeding the current generation wired connection standards. Now we're not talking about like the ultra fastest wired standards like in gigabit or even you know uh, faster standards than the gigabit uh, that exists. But when we at least compare it to the 10100 ethernet connectivity, it's been around for quite some time and is really robust at really kind of doing a lot of what we needed to do. You're finally having wireless catch up to that point and being able to beat 10100 ethernet, which is pretty impressive yeah. uh, when you talk about what you can do with that. Um, now in a real world performance perspective, a lot of the current high performance uh, 2x2 or 3x3 wireless end products are going to usually be looking at about 200 to about maybe 250 megabits of throughput. That's pretty impressive. That's actually, you know, low low latency gaming. You can stream 1080p video. You can do some pretty good file synchronization over the web to cloud servers. Um, you know, you can exchange data from PC to PC. Um, but as you start to do more concurrent levels of load and across more and more systems, definitely that bandwidth is cutting down, cutting down, and cutting down. Now, also coming with this, there are actually like a lot of new features and new technologies that you guys at ASUS are actually implementing in this with this new AC technology as well, right? Definitely. So when we talked about that performance metric, looking at AC now, that's bumping up to almost twice as fast. Where we're taking a look in a lot of situations uh, with AC being able to accomplish 400 and almost even 500 megabits of throughput. So that's allowing us to really take advantage of a lot of high performance tech that we've built into our current generation of routers, but really able to kind of take it to the next level. So when we take a look at this unit here, uh, the first thing that kind of we want to showcase that helps us to meet these performance numbers as well as help us to provide these features is going to be, of course, the 3x3 three three antenna design. Now, each one of these represents 150, right? That's correct. So 150 megabits, and that's going to be for, of course, the 2.4 and for the 5 gigahertz. Um, so that's going to be able to essentially give us the best performance as possible right now as the wireless standard. Now, another cool aspect of this router is going to be that essentially these are actually uh, detachable antennas. So this allows you to go ahead and replace them with higher DBI antennas to even be able to get better range, better throughput, and overall better signal quality. Now, does ASUS actually sell a better antenna packet, or is it just something that you go and pick up like from a hardware store to like make your connectivity We do better? actually have optional uh, antennas. Uh, we don't make the highest amplification antennas that are available on the market that could work on this product. So in this regard, you can go with like third-party vendors that specifically make these type of antennas. Um, there's different types of vendors that are out there that make um, specialized antennas for different types of installations, whether maybe it's like a warehouse, maybe it's outdoor that you need to affix it to the side of the house, 
um, maybe for like a warehouse environment, a small home business office, different things like that, you've got different options. So um, let's just clarify real quick for you. So what are you saying is basically you can buy this, it has great connectivity, but if you want to, you can even make your connectivity even stronger by just going out and buying a third party antenna, which will actually increase and boost your transfer rates, right? Correct. And, and that's not something you're normally going to have on most routers. Uh, so that kind of once again helps to reinforce this is a really high end performance. Flexibility product. again. Yeah, definitely. Now taking a look at the back also, we've got uh, two USB ports on the back of here. So that's pretty cool because this allows us to use one of the key features uh, that we have shipping with the router as well as enabling some cool features that haven't yet been enabled in firmware. So the first one is called AI Disk. AI Disk is pretty sweet in terms that you can go ahead and attach um, like a USB connected hard drive or storage device and have that be available to you locally on your intranet or your internal network, but also you can reach across the internet and access that drive and be able to download files from it, playback files from it, and do lots of different cool content with now, it. Now, is that part of the AI cloud or is that just part of what you just said a second ago? That's actually just our AI Disk feature. To supplement that, we're gonna be enabling a whole new level of functionality and a special firmware that's gonna be rolling out soon that's called AI Cloud. And we're gonna do a, a separate video on that that's gonna really go into the cool level of functionality you can This is really cool stuff, folks. You'll like this. This is actually interesting. JJ showed to me the kitchen earlier and it was really very interesting technology. You wanna share information, all of your systems, this is a really simple way to do this. You guys will like that video. Now, uh, taking a look at the rest of the back, connectivity is pretty straightforward. We've got, of course, the WAN port, and then we've got four gigabit ethernet ports. Um, one cool thing that we do offer built into the firmware is that we can turn that WAN port into an additional fifth ethernet port if you're using this unit as just an access point, as opposed to, let's just say, your wireless router. So if you're creating just a wireless signal in a, let's say, office environment for network purposes, you can go essentially have five ethernet ports versus four. So that's a nice little functionality where we're kind of giving you that port for free, depending on the usage that you have. Now, I know a lot of people don't take this consideration at all, but sometimes these units do get hot. And when they do get hot, your connectivity changes with the heat. But now this one unit is actually built and it has substantial heat sinks and everything built into it to actually maintain the unit running cooler than a standard unit also. That's definitely true. That's actually a great point that uh, this features a very high performance SOC chip. So this is a like a very high frequency chip that does all the processing work for the USB, uh, for the antennas, uh, and, and for all the concurrent connections that you can have on the router. Uh, but normally over the long term, when you use all these connections at one time, you can produce a lot of heat on that actual SOC chip. So we've gone ahead and actually placed in a full aluminum finned heat sink on top of that to help to dissipate heat and help to better ensure long-term reliability and better consistent performance. Now, I mean, you've talked about a lot of stuff today. Is this also the unit that has the two chips in it as well? So what was one of the units we were talking about that actually contained two of those SOC chips? That's actually gonna be a different router, um, okay. but this one still features uh, the highest performance AC um, chipset that's currently available on the market. Um, and, and, and kind of tying into that, that still also goes back to where if we touch on the USB ports, a lot of users might see entry level routers on the market that support USB ports, but they're not all made equal. In many situations, those ports are only gonna perform between maybe two to maybe four megabytes. Um, most of our units are gonna be able to provide you performance of between about 12 to about 18 megabytes. So, so much faster. Much faster, being able to give you real world storage performance where you can stream content off there, get better performance for multifunction printer support. So if you're, you know, you're printing higher resolution photos, it's gonna print that much faster because it can process the data much that, faster. that much faster. Now also another thing we talked about, like I know a lot of you guys out there, you've gone out, you guys have bought a new router, you took it home and you get home you're like, ah, what am I doing? I can't install this. Now, I understand that, that connecting this is so much simpler than near the previous units available as well. Is that correct? That's correct. We have an exclusive firmware on our units that's called WTR firmware. Uh, the WTR firmware has really been set up from having an easy level of functionality. So you might have now people that have like an Ultrabook, a tablet, a smartphone, maybe they don't even have like an optical drive to install software on, or maybe there's no setup software, right? Because it's Android or maybe it's an iOS device, who knows? Uh, in that type of situation, all you have to do is connect your ethernet connection, so your WAN uh, into that, turn the unit on, and you can connect directly to the wireless signal and do all the setup process in a web browser. So um, whether you're on, let's say, a normal notebook or desktop, or whether you're on a you know, wireless enabled device, you can just go to that setup screen, click through it, and within usually about 30 to 45 seconds, be online, set up, configured, and secured. Now with that said, folks, you actually, you don't have to get rid of your modem that you got from like whatever company you're dealing with. You can actually hook up through the WLAN. You can hook that up and you can use this with that 
and conjunction. So that way you get much better speed and everything with this. And if you have some redundant system that requires you still to use the old school modem they sent you, well, you can disable the modem features pop it over into this, and then this will become your connectivity, and all that'll be is basically the, the, the interface, pretty much, right? Yep, definitely. So, uh, rounding it out here, we've got the last couple of features that are present within that firmware, and there's some cool stuff in there, like we've got an embedded traffic monitor, so for people that maybe have data caps, or they it want... It gives you a ticket if you run a red light, or what? Not necessarily, but you've actually got a really nice breakdown to take a look at how much data is being passed through each one of the bands, whether it's 2.4 or 5, or through your LAN connection. Uh, you also got parental controls, maybe you want to filter out sites. So uh, as we were noting here, we've got you know things like those parental control software, um, but there's definitely other aspects that we have that work in addition to that in that firmware. Um, so some of the other things that we have in here are a cool function like Download Master. So this has the ability to go ahead and actually enter in addresses into the router directly. So like an HTTP, an FTP, um, a torrent, peer-to-peer -peer services, and it can download directly to the USB attached device without even the computer being turned on. Now, now can you prioritize that stuff to like the QS software or is that something completely different? We do. We actually also do have QoS software. Uh, for the Download Master software, that can work directly within the router if you go into it uh, via the web interface, or you can also install a special piece of software on the desktop um, or the Windows environment that will allow you to actually automatically copy the download address and just feed it into the router. But in what reference you were commenting about for the QoS, um, that's quality of service for you guys that don't know. Those are special optimizations that we make to allow it to be better performing at things like voice over IP or gaming or um, FTP management different things like that so you definitely have that level of control that you can go in there and optimize the unit for different types of connections and going along with that for users that are maybe traveling um, or in a work environment we also have full VPN support built into this so this is great if you need to maybe dial into work to be able to do work but you have to have it be able to support a VPN that's all inherently built into the actual firmware so uh, there's even so it's much easier to set up and use that any of the problems that you with the connectivity or anything at all definitely you don't have to worry about a secondary VPN client all that that can all be directly embedded within that and Good take stuff. care of that process for you so there's tons of definitely other features and functions within this that we're always adding in um, via you know the continuous firmware updates to help to improve performance performance, reliability, and overall connectivity functionality. Uh, but definitely the big one to watch out for will be coming up soon in terms of the AI Cloud release. And that's going to be a really awesome way to give you the ability to stream, sync, and share your content and from every computer that you've got hooked up to it, right? Yeah, uh, the, the cool thing essentially will be is that right now there are cloud-based services that allow you to kind of store something in the cloud from one PC. And if you've got that software installed on all of them, then you could potentially do that. But for me, I've got a lot of systems at home that I maybe don't have synced. Um, but they're all connected to my router. So with the AI Cloud software we're going to be demoing, you'll be able to actually just dial in, see all your systems connected, and you can start to sync, share, share that content in different ways, and, and do a lot of really cool stuff that we'll, we'll definitely show in that yeah, I thought that was pretty nifty. We went through that, woke up your computers and all that stuff, really new stuff. So one last question I know everybody's going to be mm -hmm. asking, JJ, is... Um, What's going to be the price on this thing when it comes out? Do we have ballpark price yet? Right now, actually, the price varies uh, depending on some of the retailers out there. But you're going to generally see this, whether it's like a, with a rebate or whether it's the MSRP pricing, usually going to be somewhere between about 100 and uh, I would say about 190 to about $200. Um, this is pretty much about the fastest router you can get on the market when you're talking about that you want the fastest throughput, the farthest range, and the overall kind of greatest performance for either local uh, performance, whether that's even land-based connectivity or wired performance. Oh, okay. and, and that's very important to consider because a lot of times you're gonna see um, units that have similar specifications, but one big thing to consider is are you doing a lot of concurrent load? So concurrent means I'm using five gigahertz, I'm using 2.4 gigahertz, I'm using USB, and I'm locally attaching those devices. Yeah, because here at my house, like right now, even though the Cameron's back there behind the camera doing his job, Usually he's like downloading stuff, transferring files, doing stuff, while I've got another guy in another room downloading stuff. So basically overall, when I have all those things just compiling on, this new technology and this stuff is basically gonna make it so everything just works flawlessly without losing the information, slowing down because of heat, or anything else. It's just really all around totally solid router solution. Definitely. And and focus really kind of for the enthusiasts that are looking for the best of the best. If you're a much more simple user, you don't need to go overkill. You could definitely consider um, you know, something like our RTN fifty three, which is still dual band.
band, uh, still has a high level of performance, but maybe doesn't have USB ports, maybe doesn't have gigabit ports. Um, you know, for definitely more of that information, you can always check out you know our pages and find out more about the complete product category. Um, the last thing is, uh, I know that you always were wondering about the mind guys control. Right here. Uh, these are actually wireless Ethernet adapters, and this is always something we want to make sure on that for users that want to get the best throughput, the best range, the best stability, try to match your, uh, your receiver adapters to your router to get the best performance. These two solutions, one's a USB-based solution, the other one's an Ethernet-based solution, they're going to be 3x3, 450 megabit uh, client adapters. Now these still work on the 8211N standard, which this AC router is fully compatible with in terms of N. Backwards compatible 100%. We will be coming out within about a month or two AC based client receivers that will even give you better performance. Um, but at a minimum, you're going to ideally want to try to match this unit with two by two wireless end solutions or three by three wireless solutions, whether they're integrated into your product or whether you're considering something like this. And you can actually use those to actually boost your signal as well as just be the receiver as well, true? That's correct. Multi-flexible products. Well, there you guys have it, folks. Be looking for this. If you're somebody who's really into your network, you don't want any problems at all, and you want to get your solution in a solid box, take a look at this new product from Azus. We'll see you guys back here as we hook this up and tell you how it really works in real time.